Hey guys, and welcome back. One of the other features that I really like about the kubectl command line utility is this ability to do port forwarding. And I really like this because oftentimes it can just be kind of a pain to have to expose an application through a load balancer using a service resource or exposing an application using a node port. You know, sometimes you just want to spin up a pod up on a Kubernetes cluster, see how it behaves, and then you'd like to be able to attach to that pod from outside of the cluster. And this is really helpful if you are running a cluster up in a cloud service like Amazon Elastic Kubernetes Service, which is coincidentally where I'm running this cluster right now. So if I run a kubectl version here and you take a look at the server version, you can see that the server version actually is on EKS right here. That's what you see when you're running an EKS cluster up in Amazon Web Services. And so it's not necessarily convenient for me to, you know, connect my local workstation here that I have on my home network up to the network environment for Amazon Web Services in Amazon VPC. And so maybe I just want to connect my local workstation up to that application directly. And the port forward capability that we have right down here allows me to do exactly that. So rather than having to attach my machine using like a VPN, for example, or using something like zero tier, which I actually have some separate training on. It's really cool. You can actually connect your local workstation up to a VPC fairly easily using a, a third party tool called zero tier. Um, that's a really nice option, but there is some setup work involved. And with Kube, Kube, kubectl's uh, port forwarding capability, it actually simplifies that process quite a bit because once you've got your kube config file created, you can go ahead and just run the port forward capability. And this allows me to forward a local port on my local network interface up into a Kubernetes cluster. Now, keep in mind that I can port forward to a specific pod. However, I can also port forward to a service controller. And the service controller is really nice because that can help me to test out to ensure that load balancing across multiple pods for a given application is correctly working. So I could forward a port to the service load balancers port and I could verify that, you know, the service controller is actually rotating around the different pods based on its selector. Also, if you would rather not specify a pod and a service, you can also use a deployment controller. And a deployment controller allows you to spin up multiple pods using what's known as a replicas property. You can specify the number of replicas that you want your deployment controller to have, and that deployment controller will actually dynamically create a replica set for you, and then it will scale that replica set to the number of desired replicas. So you can actually port forward to a deployment, and the deployment controller will basically select a pod that it would like to forward the traffic to. So rather than choosing a specific pod within a deployment's replica set, you can actually just say, I want to port forward to some pod in this deployment. I don't care exactly which one it is, but I just want this deployment controller to determine one of those pods for me and then forward traffic to it. So let's go ahead and explore how this feature works. And what you're going to see here is that there is an option to set the address that you want to listen on. And if you want to listen on just a localhost network interface, then you can do that by specifying either the value localhost, or you can specify an IPv4 address of 127.0.0.1. Or if you're using IPv6, you can use an IPv6 address of double colon one and that will allow you to bind to a localhost network interface. However, if you specify 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, or 0, 0, 0, 0, I think, I think I said it five times the first time, what you can do is basically listen on all network interfaces on your system. So if you have a, a physical network interface with a Cat5 cable plugged in, if you have a wireless interface, you can basically listen on all IP addresses on your system by using that identifier there. And then you can also specify which port you want to listen on on your local system as well. So if you only specify a remote port, kubectl will actually find a random port for you. However, if you create a port mapping, you can actually specify a specific port that you would like the kubectl command to set up port forwarding on. And so what we're going to do here is start out by just forwarding to a specific pod. So in the last video, we created a namespace called Nginx here, and we created a pod 
called nginx01. So let's say that we wanted to remotely test this nginx web application using our local utility. And so in order to do that, we can spin up a port forwarding rule using kubectl. So let's do kubectl namespace nginx, and then we'll do a port forward command here. And I'm going to specify the pod slash nginx01 that we want to connect to. And then I'm also going to specify the remote port. And nginx, of course, is just listening on TCP 80. So I'll just do colon 80 there. And that should allow me to connect to that remote instance. So what you see here is that because we did not specify the address parameter here, by default, the kubectl utility is only going to listen on a local host network interface. So if there was another device on our local network that wanted to use this port forwarding rule to connect through into that nginx container or pod, it would not be able to because we're only li listening on the lo loopback interface on our local dev system here. Also, the other thing you can observe here is that it's listening on both the IPv4 loopback interface and it's also listening on the IPv6 loopback interface. So I could actually connect to colon colon one, which is my local loopback interface on my dev system here. And as long as I connect to this dynamically selected port, which is 24650, then I can forward traffic over to that remote pod on port 80. So let's fire up a new browser here. And I'm just going to bring Firefox right over here. And we're going to go ahead and just connect to localhost on port 50, or sorry, what was it? 24650. We'll plug in 24650 there. And as you can see, we are able to successfully forward traffic over into our Kubernetes cluster. So this is really, really nice because I don't have to worry about connecting my local dev system up to that cloud-based VPC. Setting up a VPN can be kind of a pain sometimes. And so I don't really have to do any setup work except having an existing cluster running in that remote environment. And my kube config file, of course, has to be able to successfully authenticate me to that cluster. But once I do that, I am able to set up this port forwarding rule with kubectl. That's a really cool feature. However, we can customize this a little bit further. So let's say I had another device on my local network. Maybe I've got a laptop sitting on my desk here alongside my desktop system. I could actually enable the port forwarding rule here to listen on all network interfaces. To do that, I would do address 0000. 000, 000 and that will basically tell kubectl that I want to listen on all network interfaces. And you can see that that's apparent here from this log message that's spit back to us where we can see that it's listening on all network interfaces and it's chosen a different port here. So now I could go to a different device on my network, like my Android device, for example, right here. And as long as my local firewall, in this case, I'm running on Windows 11. So if I configured my Windows 11 firewall to allow connections in on port 24740, then that would allow me to actually connect over to port 80 on that remote Nginx container from a different device. So I'm actually going to try that now. So let's go ahead and go into our firewall configuration here. And then I'll go to my inbound rules right here. And I'll go ahead and just create a new rule here that allows inbound access on a particular port. And I'll say a specific port right here. And that's going to be 24740. And we'll go ahead and hit next here. And we'll just say allow on all profiles here. And I'll just say allow kubectl as the description here, and I'll hit finish. So once I've created that firewall rule, I should be able to fire up my Android device and connect. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. So in a separate tab here in my shell, I'm just going to go ahead and do get dash net IP address, and then I'll grab just the IP address property, and I'll match that against, um, let's say, 10 and I should get back my local IP address here, which is 10.0.0.233. So I'll try to hit that IP address from my Android device and go to port 24.740. All right, so I wasn't able to connect using the 10.0.0 address here, but I did connect to my zero tier network here. You can see this little VPN icon on my Android device. And I was able to access on the zero tier network interface 
over to port 24740. So that's showing me Nginx running on Kubernetes, but the port forwarding is actually being done by my desktop workstation here. So you can see the power of kubectl just making that tunnel and allowing other network devices to connect into it. All right, so let's exit out of this other terminal right over here. And you can see in the log right here, we get a message anytime that the uh, proxy is handling that connection for us. And you can also connect to service controllers as well. So let's go ahead and give this pod for Nginx a label. We'll do a kube huddle and then namespace Nginx, and we'll say label the pod Nginx01, and we'll give it a label of type equals my web app. And then we'll create a service controller that uses this key value pair as a selector. So we'll do kubectl and then namespace nginx create service. And then we're gonna do just a cluster IP. So this will only have an internal cluster IP. We're not exposing it through a node port. We're not exposing it through a load balancer either. So we're just gonna leave that at cluster IP. And then we're going to give it a name. Let's just call it my nginx01. And of course we need to specify the TCP option here. So we're gonna forward traffic from 80 on the service controller to 80 on the backing pods or endpoints. So if we do a kubectl and then describe the service, we won't have any endpoints registered yet because we need to set our selector labels. So we did need to do a nginx or sorry, kubectl on the namespace nginx, and then we'll do a set and we'll set selector. We'll say set selector, and we're going to set the selector for service named my nginx01, and we're going to set it to type equals my nginx, or sorry, uh, it's actually my web app. We'll do my web app, and then we'll just confirm that that's been registered as an endpoint by running the describe command right here again, and that should show us that our one and only nginx pod that we labeled with that label ver uh, labeling pair now is being forwarded traffic from the service controller. So the service controller only has an internal cluster IP here, but we can actually forward traffic to it using kubectl port forward. So we'll do kubectl namespace nginx, we'll do port forward. And then this time we're going to forward to the service controller called my nginx01. And we are gonna go ahead and listen on all addresses here. So we'll do 0000. zero, zero, zero. And then we'll also specify a port. Let me just do the help here really quick. And we're gonna do a local port. And this time we're gonna statically specify one. So I'm just gonna pick something like 34555 and we'll forward that to port 80 on the service controller. And remember that the service controller itself is configured to forward traffic on its port 80 over to the target port 80 on the endpoints. So we're doing a couple of hops here. We're forwarding from local 34555 to service port 80, and that's forwarding ultimately to pod port 80 as well. So now let's go ahead and fire up my Android device here again. And I'm just going to test this out to make sure that we are able to connect. I'm gonna fire up my remote here, and now we're just gonna to connect to our IP address here, and we're going to connect to port 34555 this time instead. And as you can see, we are able to connect to Nginx right here. So this is a really powerful capability that allows us to not only forward directly to individual pods, but also forward to service controllers and connect from other devices. So at this point, if I wanted to maybe fire up another tab here and run a test suite against this application that's running on a remote server, I could do things like load tests from my local machine. I could run some tests to ensure that I'm getting the expected output from an API that's running up here on my Kubernetes cluster. I could really run any utility that I want to on my local system and ensure that that remote pod is running the way I expect it to. I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.